Um, we can probably get this done in 35 minutes, something like that. Um, so when we're finished this, if you guys have questions or things like that you want to ask, we'll, we'll do that. Um, but I think we'll start with um, the format. So, and again, if somebody clicks in, I'm going to have to um, click out and you know, open it up for them. So let's go there and we'll start, start there. Okay. All right. So here we are on the, um, oops, I'm in the wrong one. Hold on. Let me get to yours. Okay, here we're, here we're in your section. Um, we go down to files, which will open. And we go to these, let's see. I would change directions. And we look at this first one, this argument board format. So we know the topic is mitigating climate change, and we know that um, you're going to choose two articles that you're going to use as what we call anchor text. And then you're going to do research on both of those ideas to see which one is maybe better, if they're both good. Um, if some, and I think the criteria we're actually looking at, one would be cost because people won't do things that cost a lot of money. The other one is time. They need to see things happen right away. Although that's not always the best idea. If you can, if you, if your results are more important in the long run, then that's sort of something to, to um, look at. And then the other thing is the degree of change. How much change do we really get? So those might be the three things you're looking at when you make your argument thesis. Okay, so this is the um, format. It's just an outline. If we went to the very end of it, um, let's, get, let's skip this part for, for a minute. Let's go to the end of it. There's a really, really brief outline. So it just says, okay, <clears throat> you're gonna have an introduction, you're gonna have background. Um, in your background, you're gonna have to have two summaries, a summary of each one of your anchor texts. You're gonna have a thesis sentence, which is your argument. Um, you know, take a position, is one better? Are they both good? Um, you know, like that, you can make an argument. And then you have a summary of each of your articles, each of your anchor texts. Um, and these will serve as the base for um, discussion of each one of these ideas. And what you'll end up doing is bringing in research. So when you bring in the research, um, you create these body paragraphs. And we want about three of them. You can have four if you want. Some people do. Depends on how much evidence you get. Um, and so you make a claim about, um, say it's Article 1 that you're supporting, and you make a claim about that particular idea, and you bring in supporting evidence, which would be um, information outside of the article, uh, because you put the information from the article in the summary. Um, so you, you're looking at, you know, sources and uh, where you might have a discussion of something that you actually saw in the first and primary article that you want to, um, you know, highlight and um, develop a little more. And th in that way, you bring in your research. So these are your research paragraphs, uh, maybe three. And then you're going to have that <clears throat> counter argument where you consider that there's actually some other ideas out there, that are out there that are pretty good that you didn't talk about. Um, and they may have benefits for various reasons. Um, but it's a counter argument, which means that you can see that you, you agree, hey, that could happen. But then you want to refute it. You want to come back to your ideas that you feel are, for whatever reasons you had in your argument statement, are the ones we should just start with. Not that we wouldn't do the others, but we'll start with those. Um, and then you have a conclusion, which you have a, kind of a two part. You sum up your claim. Um, your argument and your key supporting or your most important evidence. Or, and then um, we want to know also the larger implications for the reader. So if we don't do something, what happens? If we do these, what happens? Um, you know, and you might even talk about <clears throat> um, the public is typically resistant to things like climate change because they don't see it. And if they don't see it, it's not real people think like that. It has to be in their face. So 
something in their implications. <clears throat> and then, of course, your last page in this piece is your works cited page, which we'll talk about today. All right, let's go back through the detail part. Now that we've kind of done the overview. Um, <clears throat> you probably know how to write a paragraph, but <clears throat> what this is doing is reminding you of all those things that I would be marking if you didn't do this. I, I'm kind of reminding you, hey, you're going to need this. So um, introductions to set up and save your argument. You begin with a hook always, um, something to make it interesting. Statistic, quote, anecdote. Um, and it goes to a little small story, it could be a key example. So you start with that. And then <clears throat> background information about the subject. So what do we need to know um, to understand that climate change is serious? Um, things, there are consequences to what's going on. Um, so give us some kind of overview background there. And then we want a short sentence, one sentence summary, um, really short summary of each work discussed. Um, Make sure you identify the author, which is capitalized, and the title, which is capitalized and in quotes. Um, before you provide your thesis statement, if there's any um, terms that you feel somebody wouldn't understand or some theory that you don't think they would understand, then you have to sort of represent that. And then your thesis sentence. So you make your claim which idea would be more effective, or would they both be effective, or should we do this one first, the other one second? Make your claim. Um, summary paragraphs, there's two of those. Um, and they are the anchor text. So the two initial check, texts that you find that you think are good, it, it maybe because they're simple, maybe because they provide a lot of information, either way, um, about ways to mitigate climate change. Um, and then Formatting, you're going to have transitions. So this would be the first um, whatever. Identifying, again, your author and title of your um, summary of your primary work or your anchor text and state the claim about the key idea. Um, then develop it. Explain that, what you're talking about. Provide your evidence, um, reasons, examples, facts, statistics, quotations. Explain the evidence. How is this evidence important in proving your point um, and then concluding sentence. Uh, you, know, you have to reassert that this information really made it you know, better and clearer and something like that. So you've got two of these. Then you have body paragraphs. Um, and this is to prove your argument. And um, so each is each one of these is one paragraph. You could it's telling you here. You could have maybe more than one paragraph on a key idea if you feel like there's more information out there. Or there's a different way of looking at it. Um, but most of the time, you're going to have things that you want to support. So again, transition, um, topic sentence. What uh, fact detail or example can you tell people that will better help them understand? This claim that you're making about this key idea you had, um, introduce your evidence, um, interpret your evidence for us, concluding sentence, and you're going to have three of these, three of those, or four if you feel like it. There's your counter argument. Um, it does two things. Concession is you sort of agree with people about some detail because you are making an argument and you have to listen to the other side or it's not an argument. Um, it takes two sides. And then when you're finished sort of either anticipating their objections or representing what they might say, um, you want to refute in some way what they have to say. So make yourself sound more objective and more reasonable and that this is a better idea. Um, so that's your counter argument. And actually what you're going to be doing with the counter argument, as I said, is you're going to be looking at some of the other ideas um, it's not worth it to, to entertain the idea that climate change is not happening. So definitely don't do that there. Um, we know it's happening. So what other things might be more effective than what you've argued in terms of mitigating um, climate change? Um, okay, and again, the same sort of you know, format with that. Then your conclusion is that sort of two-part thing if you think about it. The first half is 
Do you want to kind of review what you talked about? Uh, maybe your claim and the, the most important uh, evidence, and, you know, brief mention of that. And then um, the so what part, this is where you illustrate that you've thought critically and analytically about the issue. Um, and you can do a projection, you can do any number of things that you want to do there um, to bring us into the future, um, to make your claim look important and to make the idea of mitigating um, climate change look important, which it is. Okay, and there, this gives you um, clear instructions. So present your argument again, most important evidence. Um, it should not simply restate what you're doing, but um, show, you know, the main, the main point and say the main evidence. And then secondly, why should we care about this? What's significant about this, this um, claim you're making? Um, and what information can we take away? And then thirdly, create a sense of movement so that um, we can see that you've worked through the ideas and you can <clears throat> sort of project what's going on um, <clears throat> and sort of warn people about what's coming excuse me and then your last piece is your work cited um, you want to make sure you document your research sources for two reasons you want to add credibility to your paper and you want to avoid plagiarism you don't want to do either one of those <clears throat> and then these little two things the last little things they're talking about are sort of reminding you um, the conclusion is really important in the paper, so don't like don't throw it away. The introduction and conclusion are important. You have to set it up so that people can follow what you're doing in the introduction. And then the conclusion is the final impression of your essay. If it's just a quick little short paragraph, even if you did good work before, you've kind of thrown away, um, you know, your your reputation is kind of what you've done. It's like, okay, you did a great job, and now let's get out of it like that. And it's like, oh, this doesn't feel like I, I'm not satisfied. I want to know. What does all this mean? Um, and it says, actually, it says you can introduce new information. I don't really want you to do that in the conclusion because what will happen is people will come up with another reason in their conclusion for their side. And that's confusing because we're looking for something that concludes. It's the end of the piece, not, not new or information or another reason. Um, so no new claims or anything like that. Okay. And then again, that, that simple one that follows, but you may need to look back at the other one to kind of see what's going on here. Okay. And so when you're looking at those um, key ideas, which I think are maybe, let's see, here? No, here. The, um, of the topics these other guys came up with you can kind of roll through this just to give you a quick way of searching um, and then the other thing to do if you don't find anything here you like is you can go onto google and either put in terms for mitigating climate change solutions to climate change climate change reduction um, how to reduce the impact any kind of search thing like that in google uh, to come up with your maybe your keywords um, research that a bit and then um, make sure that your sources are very credible. I mean, we don't want anything that's um, somebody has a wild opinion or somebody doesn't really have solid solid backing to what they have to say. Um, there's some probably some very flighty ideas out there that you know could be good, but they're not well worked out, and there's no science behind it. So be careful of that. And then when you have your ideas and you sort of summarize those pieces and you're thinking about, okay, I need to have some backup here. Um, at that point, what I would do is go to your library uh, webpage, look at your library webpage, and you've got your key term now. It should be easy to search for it. Um, then you're, you've kind of narrowed your search before you get to the library webpage because it seems pretty difficult to go on the library webpage and not have an understanding of what your search term really is because you're going to get very high level um, information there. So for the paper, you're only, you're, so let's say you chose two of these ideas and you like those, um, those uh, that information they found, you like that particular article, so you want to use that one. 
you can use two of these if you want um, as your, you know, your, your, your main um, anchor text. Um, or you can find something else, but so there's two there. You need six altogether. You're going to need one database at least so that I can see that you know how to do a database, that you know how to do the search. And then the rest are kind of on you. So a total of six. Um, if you have more than six, that's great. If you find you're, you're only using something, something minimal from one and you don't have enough, then it's a good idea to find some more sources because you're going to work really hard to write that paper without any information. Um, if you forget how to go um, to the library web page, just remember you can go back to the research citation piece, click on that one. It'll bring you to this, these videos, which if you don't understand the process, you can go through the first two or three actually. And then, um, then you can use this last one to actually get on um, how to log in. And let's see, I don't know what's going on with this one. Yeah. Okay, so these last two, the librarian made for us. This one's about eight minutes. This one's about 11 minutes. So this one shows you how to log in, do a basic search. This one shows you some search strategies if you're not finding exactly what, what you want. How do you narrow it down a little bit? So these are really all you would need for the um, getting on the library and kind of looking for that. Um, and then you have plenty of information on here. So um, this is citation information. There's something about paraphrasing here, which was kind of maybe useful if you're forgetting how to paraphrase, which again is putting in your own words, but it sort of reminds you of the things. And we know with the paraphrase, you've got to um, give it credit. And then they have some examples to show you, well, what's the difference? What's the difference between, say, a quote, legitimate paraphrase, where you didn't um, cheat. And if you look at the difference between the two, um, the second one has taken a lot of the exact words of the first one, of the thing they were actually copying. The legitimate paraphrase maybe takes two words out of it. Everything else is, is in that person's own words. Notice that they give them credit. There's an in-text citation over here at the end of it. So they're giving credit for the source, so they're not plagiarized. Now this is a printed piece, which is why we have a page number. Um, this is also a printed piece. For you, I think the majority of what you guys are going to be doing will be online pieces. So they'll be um, either the author's last name, or there'll be an article title. There'll be one of those, those two pieces. Okay. Let's see what else we have here for you. Okay, so um, the other thing I thought we might want to look at um, is the module on the page here. And then we'll look at the uh, mybib.com, which is one way of doing searches. Uh, well, it's not just doing searches, it's actually setting up your citation for you. It's really kind of, I think, pretty cool because it's really easy. Uh, much easier, I think, than the other two are. I think the, um, the um, easy bib often can't find things like the um, author or the title of the piece. That's, that's sort of like, is that really a good search um, a citation creation thing? No, not so great. And then Citation Machine, both of these want you, they'll give you one free citation, and then they want you to sign in for a trial. And if you sign in for a trial, it's only good for three days, and at the end of that, they, they want to charge you money. So, and then you also have to look through all these ads. This other one doesn't do that, so we're going to look at that one. Um, okay, looking at this module, so it's down under here, not in files, but down here under modules. If we look at that for a minute, it's got some some good stuff, actually a lot of stuff. Um, there's a quiz at the end of this, and I'm not requiring that this time, um, but you really have to know this pretty well. So um, this is what I would use, actually. Um, we can go through this really fast, and I'll show you what's in there, what it contains. 
you just click on it like I did, and sooner or later it will come up. In theory. Okay, so this is what you're going to be able to do when you finish this. Define plagiarism, importance of citing sources, importance of copyright, uh, identify public domain and creative commons, which is the material we can use. Recognize citation styles. You're, we want MLA. Identify the components of a citation and distinguish the pieces of information each provides. Um, and it's about five pages. There's one little video, which is kind of cool, really short, and a quiz if you want. So, um, so that's kind of how it. Now we're going to start down here just by going clicking on this thing. Just a little piece down there. It says why cite, and it explains because if you use something and you don't give credit for it, um, that's called plagiarism, which is really cheating. Um, if you cheat and, you know, what will happen is teachers can pretty much tell when you've done that, um, then they can give you an F on their paper, on your paper, they can fail you in the course, they can actually take you to the dean, and the dean can take you before a board, it just depends on how, you know, egregious or serious it is. And you can actually get marked on your transcript for that course, plagiarized. Um, that's not pretty. You don't want that on your record. So it's important to kind of do this. Um, don't be sloppy about it. So here we go. This one is about citations. Copyright means if you want to use it, then you have to request permission. And copyright's a long time. It's the life of the author plus 70 years after the person dies. So it's a long time. Um, so it kind of goes through that for you. Um, you're gonna have whoops, you're gonna be wanting to look for they were there. A little slow, I think, for you guys too, probably. Public domain you want, and this is you can use it, you don't need permission. Um, and so it's gonna be things, some facts, some theories, some ideas, US government, you can do all that. Open access um, allows uh, the the reuse of copyrighted works. Um, so there's open access pieces. Let's see. If you wanted to know really, okay, so what does all that mean? If you click on this little thing, it's an eight open video. Access is free, immediate, online availability of research articles with full reuse rights. This is about, first of all, making all this content available for anyone, wherever they are in the world, to read and access and build upon so people can do interesting things and work in new ways with the material to really make the research literature much more. So this is a fun little video. It's only like eight minutes. So it's probably worth watching because then you, you've learned something and realized that what you're learning in this course is really what you're going to apply for the other courses because they're not going to do this again. This is done. Um, okay, so then when you read that, let's see if this will go to the next page here. How to read and interpret citations. Um, they're not hard to do. You're going to be looking at MLA style, um, eighth edition. If you're doing anything else as your major, you're probably going to be doing APA, which is a different style. Um, sorry about the MLA thing. It's, it's done for English. I'm not sure why we're not doing APA, um, but we're not. Um, so if we go over this, you're going to see if you're not recognizing what it is. This is the, these are the authors. Um, this is the title. Notice that the title is in quotation marks. There's a period at the end of it before the quotation marks. Um, this is your publication, Journal of Adult Development. It's probably also um, the name of the, probably the, the journal that it was in at one point. This piece right here means that it's the 22nd volume. So since they organized the, that um, journal, maybe it's 22 years, probably it is. Um, what happens is it was a printed piece and every year they bind it, it becomes another book in the library. If you're looking for it, you won't find the magazines unless they're very current. What you'll find is these little bound, um, usually these little bound uh, volumes, which contain in there, by the way, the issues. So you can see in this case, it's the second issue in this 22nd year, 22nd volume. 
Um, so the second maybe magazine that came out. And then uh, it was published in 2015. That's a data publication. And then this is the page range. It's in this page range, whatever it is. This one is on a database. So it's Academic Search Premier. Um, we don't use this term anymore, so this is a little old. I'll have to tell the library about that. And then um, 27th of July, 2016. Okay, but for databases, the library website will make it for you. So you don't really have to be too concerned about that. Uh, that used to be one of the more difficult things to do. Um, okay, so there you go. And it's telling you it was accessed through the Academic Search Premier, which is probably the one you would use. You can also, it's, it's part of EBSCOhost, so um, either EBSCOhost or Academic Search Premier, probably what you would do. Um, there's a citation guide, which you know you can use if you want. It gives you a little um, hyperlink down there. And so it's, it talks about how to do different things. Um, citation generators, it's got some over here you can look at. Um, we're going to look at something that's not on there, that mydiv.com, because it will actually make your works cited page for you and also your citations. Um, and it gives you some basic information, um, quotes and paraphrases, anything that's not your own you have to cite. Um, Style of format, the course you're taking will determine your style of format. Um, and then, let's see, if we went to the Purdue OWL, <clears throat> which is something that's really useful, um, it's an online piece. I actually met this the person that actually started years ago when she started the site, which I don't know how many years is, 15 or 20 years ago. She's retired. Um, she's the one that put this out on, online, and she's a very interesting person, very smart. Um, so this is the site for this. This is the online piece. Um, and so you can go here to the owl part, which is what you want, provided it goes. There it's going. See, it's going. Um, there's a pretty owl, and it's pretty useful for stuff. Let's let it come up. Um, so it does a lot of stuff here. Um, research and citations, probably the one you want. It even has general writing, how to create an essay up there. Research and citation, if you clicked on it. Um, it's going to have resources, conducting resource. MLA style, they're going to have this one for you. So if you clicked on that. And so here's a style guide. Wow. If you can see all these links keep going down, this is this is pretty darn thorough. Oops. Get out of there. And what's nice about this is let's say you're doing something, you can't figure out how to do it. Um, this is a works cited page basic format, works cited page with books, periodicals. Um, you're not going to be doing in notes or footnotes, don't worry about that. But let's say the basic for the in-text citation. If we click on that one, and we're in the Purdue OWL. I'll go down. Nice. OK. Um, they're gonna, they say they're going to let you cite here. I'm going to see if this actually works. I'm going to try one. Whoops. Let's try this one. Okay, so this is an article I found. Let's just see if theirs works. This might be pretty good. Okay, I highlight the button on the URL. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to this guy. And it is a website, so I'm going to click, click, paste this thing in. And let's see if it will do it for us. Back. I don't see it working. Maybe it does. Well, yeah, I put it on the page here. Yeah, it's 
it's just maybe an example, it's not really a, um, but in text citations, this is pretty helpful if you roll down through that. And we're not interested in print, we're interested in none of that, we're interested in, um, well, these are good. Um, same last names, multiple authors. So you can kind of roll through this. This is really nice because it's free. Um, it's got a lot of information here, but if we went back over there and go back up, there. Um, this is the whole MLA guide. It's the whole thing. It's really what you're looking at. So you've got basically the book online. Um, but again, if we clicked on it, it should bring us into some subheadings, hopefully. Yep, here's our subheadings. Um, there's an introduction and like workshop formatting and style guide, and we're probably more interested in that. And if we go down in here, there's the basics, formatting quotations, let's just say we're interested in, um, see down here, let's say we're interested in, well, periodicals, which would be your journals. So, um, actually, no, let's go to the, let's go to the electron. Oh, well, I have to go back. Get out of periodicals. We're going to go to electronic. Dang. Okay. It either works too slow or works too fast. Here's electronic sources. Okay, because this is most what you guys are going to do. Um, funny, they call it electronic sources rather than web, but okay. All right, so you can roll through this. It tells you here's a basic, the basic information that's supposed to go in, um, uh, citing something online, and it goes through all the stuff you might need, and then it gives you some examples of what they look like. Here it is, author title. The title, when they say title of the container, it means like the larger piece. So the small piece is the article. The larger piece would be their website, um, could be a book, um, something like that. And this, look at this, it's in italics. They're doing it that way for you. Um, this is everything that's possible. You don't have all this stuff. You don't have to worry about all that. Um, so there's a lot of information on this. I don't want to labor this let's get out of there um, okay so we did that we probably did too much work on that one and we're back to the module okay styles overview which we kind of already looked at since we went to the purdue piece um and this is a quiz you won't be taking so we're gonna forget about that um what I wanted to show you was under here, I think. Yeah, we have this article here. Um, and I'm going to go to this. This site I was telling you about, it's mybib.com. Um, go there. And here we are. Almost. Okay, yours is going to look a little different because I I was playing with this one this morning, and so um, I found an article I liked and it made a citation. But now I have another article, which is this one, and so I'd like to create a citation. I click create a citation there. And it wants my URL, so I go to that article that I found that I liked. Um, I copy this, copy the URL. I come back to um, this, 
I simply paste it in, paste. Show you how easy it is. When we hit search, um, yeah, this looks like what I want. So that looks good. It's credible, by the way. It says it's credible. So I'm going to click on it. So they put the information they had. We couldn't detect the web page author for this site, web page author. So we can go back there and see if there's a web page author. Um, we have CNN, so let's see, that would be the web page author. If they're talking about the author of this particular piece, well, no, there is no particular person that wrote this, so the staff did it. This person, CNN, Stephanie Busari, reported, but it's not necessarily that she wrote the piece, so we can't give her credit, it doesn't say that. Um, what we can do, is look in the URL, and it, no, it doesn't have that there either. So we go back to this, we say, no, I don't think it does. Let's just pretend like it doesn't. And we go like that, no. They published, it couldn't find. They published it, yeah, we can get this one. Yes, it does. And so we go back there for the date published, and we're going to find that it's, let's see, let's find the date. Well, let's go uh, No. Welcome. So it's a video. Um, Yeah, it's a video. No, we have the video. We don't have. We don't have. Please explore the receipt. Okay, we're not going there. Okay, so this is actually. We don't have date. Um. I'm picking the right piece here. Okay. So let's try this again. And we have a video this time. So now we paste that in. Paste. Um, we do a search. Should have checked it a little better. Um, credible, this is all credible. So yeah, you like this one. By the, look, it says by anonymous, which means they still don't have an author there. So this will probably not have an author. It will come right to the title of the video. Um, we don't have an author, so we're going to go no. They published. Well, let's just click no, it's just easier to go that way. Okay, so let's say we don't have that. We don't have the web page author. We really don't have that. Um, we don't have this date when it was published, but we do have the date of access. We've got that. We've got the, the website name. By the way, CNN is published by CNN, so we don't need that one. Here's what it looks like, the preview. Notice that it starts with the article title, or, or rather the video title. Um, Here's the website, it's on CNN. There's the URL, and we have an access date that we've got. So we're going to save this. And here's our citation. And it's pointing out something. We don't have things we're missing. So maybe we would go back when we had more time and look for the date published and see if there's a web page author. Um, and it tells you this is an important detail you should have. This is an important detail you should have. So. Um, so we would look for that. We would go back and look for that. All right. And then when you're done with this and have all this done, you can go um, download works cited and it'll make the page for you.
So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's say we're going to have it in Word. That would be fun. Show that in the folder. Okay. Here's my first project, I suppose. Let's just click on that one and open it up. So it didn't save it as Word, it saved it as something else. Um, we would have to look for that. Let's see. Let's do a copy and paste, maybe. All right, now we can see it. Um, it didn't do a good job with Word. But that's what it looks like, and we would click to copy it, we'd copy the whole thing, and we put it into our paper. But look, it's all set up for you, really nice. It's even indented. It's great. The whole thing is perfect. It's exactly what you would want. Now, this one, again, you would go back to see if you can find a data publication and an author. Um, and then in our in-text citation, in the paper, this one would have Beaumont. It's just this is the first piece in there. All we're going to have, it's not, um, we wouldn't have any of this other information because all it says is that you want to find out more information, this piece that I've been putting in my paper, go to the work study to see it. In the other case, in this one, because it's, they don't have a, um, a person that created the video, then this, this long title would go right after the information that say you heard when you played the video. Um, and you might copy that or remember it or watch it well enough that you could actually type it exactly. Um, so this would go inside the parentheses. Notice this is the last name, but in this case, it's the actual title and it's in quotes. Okay. So, so that's a lot, isn't it? All at once. But it's also everything you need, I think. I mean, you're pretty good there. So we looked at the um, mybib.com one, which is really what I recommend because it'll it doesn't charge you anything. It'll make you a work cited page, um, easy to use, and then also that module. We went through the module, so you can see if you need information, you can go there. Um, the Purdue Owl is some place you can go that's really good. Um, all this is good stuff for citing citing stuff. Um, we looked at the format of the arguments. Um, we looked at the ideas of where you might get, or the peer examples where you might get ideas. Um, does anybody have any other questions in terms of where you are right now? I mean, so has anybody started on the on the um, argument yet? Jasmine, have you started on the argument? Not yet. Okay, she's telling me not yet. Um, Jessica, have you started? I haven't started yet. I've been unsure about some things. I'm good now. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm happy. All right. Um, so please keep up with your things that you're revising now. Um, Alma, how are you doing? Are you working on stuff? Okay, yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, listen, um, one guy this morning, his, he was up at 4 o'clock because they're just, he's, they're putting him on shifts um, all over the place. So he never knows when he's going to be at work. And they just call him up and say, if you want, you know, if you want the money, come and work. So everybody's got stuff. When is it due? Um, so this thing, we're going to, we want a rough draft on the 28th. But when I talk about rough draft, which is next, um, what is it, Tuesday or so, maybe the 29th. Um, I'll put that up in, in the, um, this afternoon. When I talk about rough draft, I really just want an introduction so and maybe the two summary paragraphs so we see what you're doing so that you've kind of done decided on your articles. Um, and then see even then you're going to have on the 28th you're still going to have um, well if it's the 28th you have that week and then you have two you have three weeks at that point 
to finish the paper, um, which is plenty of time, and that's good. So with the final draft, we want to turn in on the um, maybe the 11th or the 13th. Well, really, probably the 11th. No, I could I could take it on the 13th. Um, and then what I'll do, of course, is I always do and mark it out. So if there's stuff you guys have to fix, you would have the next week, because we're all, we our class doesn't end I think until the 20. 20 seconds, something like that. So that would give us plenty of time to get everything done. And that's all we're really trying to do is just get everything done. Um, okay. Any other questions? Those are good questions. They're very helpful. So um, I'm going to stop the recording now and then.